Now, this is a really interesting technique in that it's super popular and you can do it even if you're not good at visualization. What's up guys, it's Camel Kez. Today we're gonna to be talking about my best separation techniques. Before we get into the video guys, I wanna thank you so much for the support on the channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I've got plenty of videos. I do podcasts every week. This channel is totally Patreon supported, so if you're enjoying the videos, please consider becoming a Patreon to support the channel. Let's get back to the video. So you've set out to have your first astral projection experience or you're on your journey to having more astral projection experiences and you've run into a difficulty along the road of many obstacles. You've laid there for probably 20 or 30 minutes, you've got the vibrations and now you don't know what to do with the experience and before you know it, it ends. I know exactly how you feel because that's happened to me plenty of times. <laughs> There are plenty of times I would lay there to try to have myself an astral projection experience and I would just sit there for probably like an hour or two and nothing actually happened. One of the first pieces of advice I tell people when they're having difficulty separating is that they need to try astral projecting at a different time. The best times to astral project are in the morning, right after you wake up, and right before you go to bed. I've said before in some of my older videos that the reason why people have such a hard time with astral projection is because they're just not relaxed enough. If you think about it, it's going to be very difficult for you to separate from your body if you're uncomfortable or if you're just simply not relaxed enough. So that's my first tip for separation is you have to be much more relaxed than you think you do. Relaxation is an art. I have a video on my astral projection masterclass totally dedicated to relaxation. Another problem that people have when they're trying to separate is that they're mistaking the vibrations for just energy fluctuation in their body and so they try to move before they're actually in sleep paralysis. So there are a few ways that you can handle getting into sleep paralysis and knowing if you're in sleep paralysis. So let me give you some of the symptoms. Sleep paralysis is just a deep and full trance. When you're in a deep trance you have particular sensations that let you know that you're in that state fully. Some of those include a heavy sensation throughout your entire body. Sometimes you'll feel like a warm blanket has come over you. A common feeling that I usually get when I'm in full trance is I get this strong falling sensation. I've also noticed that when I get into trance, there's a distortion in sound and perception of my environment. Things that are happening around me will get quieter and sound a lot more distant. So the first thing you want to do to make sure that you don't blow your trance or blow your whole astral projection experience is to make sure that you're actually in a sleep paralysis state and you can do that by just wiggling your fingers or your toes or just trying to you know move your eyes or move your head just a little bit basically any movement that is minute that won't break the trance state you may have to experiment with this sometimes but that is a problem that people have had wait until you're in sleep paralysis to try to move out of your body this is not a 100 foolproof method to getting out of body but this is a separation technique that helps wait until you're in sleep paralysis and you'll know you're in sleep paralysis because your awareness will switch over pretty crazy Crazy. It's going to feel like you've immediately started dreaming or you just kind of dipped your consciousness just a little bit, but you want to catch that little dip and then try your techniques. A technique that I use a lot of the time is the rope technique for my separations. Now this is a really interesting technique in that it's super popular and you can do it even if you're not good at visualization. The first step to this technique is to imagine that there's a rope dangling above your head if you're laying on your back or on your side or whatever the case may be. Just imagine, feel that there's a rope next to you and that you're grabbing onto it with phantom hands. Now when I say phantom hands, I mean that you're grabbing onto it with your astral hands you're creating your astral hands you don't have to see this you just need to feel this so start to imagine that you're pulling on this rope and you're climbing up this rope and imagine and feel as though you're rising higher on this rope until you're out of body there are a lot of common problems that people have with this technique and I think it's just that they're not doing the technique for long enough or they're losing focus I've noticed that when I've done this technique and it's been successful my focus has been almost perfect you have to be able to hold your mind on the one task of climbing that rope. What you'll notice is that when you're in this in-between state of consciousness, it's easy to start daydreaming and then proceed to sleep. So the one thing you wanna focus most on is staying focused when using the rope technique. The next technique I wanna talk about is the roll technique. This is a technique I use for almost all of my astral projections. It's my go-to technique. When it's time to go, I roll. That was pretty lame. <laughs> 
But it's true, I use this technique all the time and it's as simple as just rolling. Again, I caution you, wait till you're in sleep paralysis, wait till you've experienced that switch over in consciousness. And you'll know, you'll feel different because you're not rolling with your physical body. It's almost like you're trying to will yourself to roll without actually rolling. It's like focusing on the feeling you get right before you're about to move. You know, when you're laying in bed and you're tired and you have to get up and you're like, God, I gotta get up out of bed. I have to do something today. And you're focusing on moving. You wanna focus on that sensation of like charging your muscles to get ready to move, but not actually moving them. The last technique I want to talk about in this video is using visualization. Now there are plenty of visualization techniques out there for separation. Some of the main ones I use are going to the mirror and just imagining that I'm in another place. This is sort of a bi-location technique in that you're imagining that you're already in the place that you want to be. So when I'm trying to astral project and I've reached that prime spot where I've got the vibrations and I've got sleep paralysis and I'm ready to go, I usually imagine myself standing right next to my bed or standing in another room. So here are a few things that you can do to make this visualization much more powerful. For this bilocation technique, you want to pick a particular room in your house that you are very familiar with. This can be your room, this can be the bathroom, this can be the living room, whatever the case may be, just pick a room. It would be best if this room of the house could transition from carpet to hardwood floor. So if it's a living room, try to transition into the kitchen. If it's a bathroom, stand on a mat and then step onto the floor. And if it's your room, do the same thing. The reason that you want to do this is because it gives you a tactile sensation to add to your visualization. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go and stand in this room and take in as much detail as you possibly can. Some people call this finding the home station. For this particular technique, we're just going to call it finding home base. Just spend a few minutes taking in the environment. How does it feel? What do things sound like? How does it smell? Uh, focus on your feet. Do that for at least a few minutes. You want to feel your body in this environment in as much detail as possible because it'll make the later steps much easier. After you've focused on this for at least two to three minutes, I want you to step barefoot off of the carpeted area onto the hardwood floor so that you can feel the cold and rigid floor beneath your feet. Spend another few minutes focusing on this, about two to three minutes. Once you've done that, you can close your eyes and focus on where you are. Try to see the things in the room with your eyes closed. Try to feel them. Try to sense the room. I want you to do your best to recall the sensations that you experienced in that particular room when it's time for your astral projection attempt. So when you've got yourself in the perfect spot and you're ready for your exit technique, this is where you employ the bilocation method. When you feel like it's time to go, you want to envision yourself in the spot that you were in earlier in as much detail as possible. You're going to use the stimuli that you were aware of when you were standing in that room. See yourself in that environment, feel yourself in that environment in as much detail as you possibly can. And the most crucial part of this exit technique is that you interact with the environment. I've noticed that when I just imagine myself in the bathroom, it doesn't really do as much as if I'm imagining myself looking in the mirror and touching the mirror and turning on the faucets in the bathroom because it's allowing my mind to create that scenario and project my consciousness into that place. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. There are tons more techniques that you can get into and that you can use, but these are the basic ones that I use on a regular basis when I astral project. Most of the techniques that I've used kind of revolve around these three methods of doing something physical in your mind, seeing yourself in another place, and just instinctively rolling or getting up when you feel the time is right. I hope the information in this video helps you guys to have your first astral projection experience. If you have any questions or video suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. I read them all and I will help you. And as always guys, never stop adventuring.